All right, last year we had an opportunity to check out this Autolink uh, AL539 code scanner, and I found it to be very reliable and handy, so uh, I gave my old code scanner to my future son-in-law because I like this one so much. Autel just reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out their MaxLink ML629 scanner, and at first I'm thinking to myself, you know, how many scanners do you need? Uh, and then I saw this one will pull ABS codes, airbag codes, transmission codes. So, of course, I said, send it my way and we'll check it out. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's go do it. All right, let's take a quick look at what you get in the box. Obviously, you get the scanner. You get a fairly long interface cable that allows your scanner to communicate with your vehicle. And it's a standard interface on most vehicles from 96 forward. Get the user manual and a quick start guide, which is helpful just to get you going. Uh, you get a USB cable because you can also uh, transfer the diagnostic um, results to your PC. And we'll check that out toward the end of the uh, video here. And obviously you get the all-important case. Uh, and I, I mean that uh, in all sincerity because uh, I'm one of those people I like to have everything in a case so I know where it is. All right. Uh, one thing that is noticeable difference here without even uh, really inspecting the scanner, this one has removable flash media and it includes an 8 gig uh, SanDisk micro SD card. So you could uh, actually have multiple cards and store data and uh, retain the data without having to worry about overwriting it. So, All right, so we're in the uh, K1500, the 98 here. Um, I scanned my wife's Equinox, but I, I mistakenly had the tool out of frame. So we'll scan this truck. Um, this is the standard OBD2 interface, and it's usually found in the driver's side uh, compartment under the dash. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Uh, I'm going to bring the tool out through the window and then we'll turn the key on uh, and we'll see if we can get this one in the frame. All right, we'll see if we can do a better job with this vehicle uh, and get it on camera here for you. Uh, we're plugged into the 98K1500. I've got the key on, okay, and I've actually produced a check engine light by unplugging my mass airflow sensor. Uh, the navigation is really easy. You've got these arrow keys here and it highlights an icon. So we're going to just do the first um, OBD2 test here, which is going to should just give us a general sort of um, universal code that would be pretty much consistent um, on most vehicles from 96 forward. What we're talking about here is typically a check engine light. Okay, so it's going through the process. And three codes found. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, and at this point I can click this icon to save. And I did do that on the uh, Equinox, so we'll have to see how we retrieve that code. I'm going to click OK here. Okay, and at this point I can actually uh, arrow down. My first uh, option here is to read the codes. And I'm going to do stored codes, the stored codes and pending codes. And look at that. Mass airflow sensor, okay? And again, I unplugged it just so we could actually create a problem. And at this point, I'll click Save. Save success. Okay, now I'm just going to back out of this, um, this diagnostics module. And let's go to the, um, the specific scan tool here. I know I'm a little bit crooked. Uh, and this is where we can actually see if we can pull uh, an ABS code or an airbag code or transmission codes. Okay, and this one is specific to the vehicle, so we need to select where the vehicle was made. USA, this one is a GM. And this is an old one. Let's see if it goes back that far. 98. Uh, and then you have to select passenger car, light duty truck. And this is a Chevrolet. K pickup, four wheel drive, and this one has 5.7 V8, and at this point it's running its scan, and we have a powertrain uh, code, let's see what it says here, transfer case, no communication, there's a fault in the powertrain, and that would be the um, mass airflow sensor. So here 
it's pulling the same code that we pulled in the uh, OBD2 scan, but it gives you a little bit more information. We can save it. Okay, let's back out. And we can also erase the codes here. We could have done it in the other module as well. And obviously it would just come back until I um, plug the mass airflow sensor in. Okay, let's back out. Let's see about the uh, ABS sensor. I like this right here. Right front wheel speed sensor, open circuit. And uh, I know why that is, and that's because my brakes were chattering. You know, when, you're, when you, be, you have a bad sensor, uh, before it actually fails, um, it may not always be the sensor, it could be the ring uh, that the sensor reads. Uh, but when they begin to fail, uh, sometimes your brakes will chatter um, as, if, as if it thinks your brakes are locked. And then it does this quick sort of um, release chatter type of a thing. And what I did is I unplugged the uh, sensor just so that it wouldn't do that while I was plowing. So, and let's see, we also have stop switch circuit, right front wheel uh, speed signal missing. So that tells us what's going on with our brakes. And we'll just back out of it here. Whoop. Went too far. And let's just go ahead and take a look at the airbag information. Okay, so we have some error codes here on the airbags. Um, and basically, I'm believing what this is reading is that I have the airbags disabled on this vehicle because it is my plow truck. And obviously, when I slam into a snowbank, I don't want those airbags to go off. So I've got the airbags disabled. Uh, on this vehicle, so I believe that's what we're seeing here. I'd have to look it up and see what the specific code actually is, but I believe that's I believe that's what we're going to find on that. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go plug it into the Sierra, and we'll see if we can capture some live data. All right, so right now we're in the uh, 2014 Sierra, and I've got it in um, sort of live data view. And there's all kinds of information here we can view. Um, but what I'm going to do is we're going to go for a little test drive and see how the data changes. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of information and we should be able to also um, record some of this, I'm hoping, and then do a playback. So let's go and let's make sure we have something that we can detect. So there's your fuel pressure your manifold air pressure, your RPM, your spark advance, and your mass airflow, okay? So fuel pressure at the top, mass airflow at the at the bottom, RPM, a manifold pressure, spark advance, okay? So hopefully um, we'll be able to get some of this on camera. Let me get out on the open road here. All right, so we're driving down the road here, and you can see we're at uh, 1,200 RPMs. And we'll just start to speed up here and we'll look for changes. And I know that the video is probably shaky as it normally is when I have a tripod in the in the vehicle while driving. But let's just go ahead and uh, see if we can make uh, some changes happen here. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we see some changes happening on the gauge there. Moving right along. All right, let's take a view of the uh, graph while we're going down the road a little bit, just to show you how that works. Okay, so you can see that the tool has uh, quite a bit of functionality. And it is uh, a substantial upgrade over the other Autel tool, and it's really, really, in the big scheme of things, not much difference in price. Uh, just the ability to diagnose and identify an ABS uh, error uh, or an issue with a sensor and knowing which wheel to start looking at is huge because uh, when you have that ABS light on you don't know out of the four wheels really where to where to start unless there's something obvious so uh, let's go plug this thing into the computer to see what we can see uh, from that perspective as well
All right, so I downloaded the Maxi PC Suite from the Autel website. Uh, you do need to register this particular tool and create an account in order to get the software. Uh, but first, we'll take a look at this PC Link, and that came in with the installation along with the drivers for this particular scanner. Okay, I'm going to flip over here to Maxi Check Printer. And then on the tool itself, I'm going to go down to Playback. And then we'll just select one of the events um, that we recorded. I'll probably do the uh, the data stream because there's probably more information on that than uh, than just the codes. And now at this point, um, you can see where it says print here. I'm just going to select the center button here. And you can see that the uh, data is being transferred to the software. Now, we only captured two frames um, during our live uh, stream. Um, so if you had a bunch of data, let's say we let that go for five or ten minutes, we'd be able to bring the information into, say, a spreadsheet where we could actually do some further analysis on uh, what the vehicle was doing, making comparisons to the various sensors uh, in an effort to try to diagnose the problem. Okay, So you can see where this would be helpful. This is how you transfer the information from the tool to the computer. Okay, So that's uh, the Maxi printer or PC link is what the icon shows. Now this Maxi PC suite, this is what allows us to update the software and in order to put it in the correct mode I'll need to disconnect the tool. Let me zoom out with the camera here. I said zoom out. Okay so in order to get it in the correct mode you need to hold the um, left arrow button down when you plug it into the USB and that puts it in sort of an update mode. And I'm not sure if you can see it says update data by USB. Okay, now this is the, uh, I'm going to enter my credentials, the, the account information that I cre uh, used when I created the account on the Autel site. And just so you know, I did run all of the updates uh, before we started scanning. Okay. There's a manual here. Uh, there are no available updates, but there were. Uh, there are actually 11 updates. And if we go here to the installed software, um, let's say we didn't necessarily need an Acura, uh, you know, scan codes. We could uninstall that. Uh, so this is how you basically manage the specific software um, on the scanner itself. So it's actually pretty versatile in that it can be it can be updated software-wise, and it's not just a single firmware update. Uh, because these, uh, when you get into the ABS codes and the airbag codes and so forth, then these are specific to the vehicle make and model. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Um, Aut I thank Autel for providing this scanner to me. I like it, uh, and I'm going to use it. And uh, if you have questions and comments, please leave them down below. And again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and have fun. Yeah, I think uh, I think we see some changes happening on the gauge there. Move right along.